Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rome Overlanding. I'm here with Rulfi. You guys know him, he's been on many trips with us. And today we are actually doing his first build. So for some of you, this might be a surprise, but if you've been keeping an eye on Instagram, you might have seen a couple of the little uh, leaks here and there. Behind him is his beautiful new 4.5 liter V8 Toyota Land Cruiser 79 double cab. A lot is gonna be happening in today's episode. You know, we're here at Land Cruiser Heaven, they're helping with some of the fitment stuff. We've got Terrain Tamer, have driven up to get involved on actually helping and fit a lot of components. Rulfi will walk us through all of that stuff now and uh, you can get to see what Rulfi is graciously allowing us to film and be a part of his awesome build. You got a little sneak peek at building a Land Cruiser now with the Bush Tech trip we yes. did. You got to learn a lot of things you know, about the cruiser that are strengths and weaknesses. And I think today we're gonna to see a lot of things that solve a lot of the weaknesses of the Land Cruiser. Yeah, that trip was invaluable yeah. for this build. A lot of decisions on the parts that are lying in front of us here today were, were actually based off of that. So thanks to Darren and Bush Tech yeah. for, you know, that opportunity. Yeah, no, I think um, it was very valuable. Because it was an awesome car and awesome trip that we did. Yeah. But the amount of stuff that we learned and I learned from that for this build specifically mm. was was massive no absolutely so, yeah let's get into some of the gear The first piece of kit, the face of the car, we chose the ARB Summit bar. Behind that bar is a worn VR Evo 12,000 pound synthetic winch. The next major component was the suspension. Yeah. And we have the full Terrain Tamer Pro parabolic setup. From steering damper to every bush, to every U-bolt, to absolutely every little component on the suspension will be changed to Terrain Tamer's Pro setup. That's awesome. So that, that was the second major component. And I mean, you've got all the little things in between there. You've got diff breather kits, you've got diesel filter, you've got the um, even the air filter insert kits yes. to like prevent dust from yes. coming into the air box. Another major modification is the rear anti-roll bar. And all the mounting points are already there from Toyota. There's no drilling, there's no, yeah. you know, funny stuff you have to do to fit that thing. So that's a terrain tamer part as well. And yeah, it's something that I think will add a lot of stability, mm. especially because this is gonna be an overlanding rig, Absolutely. heavy laden, you know, a lot of stuff in the back. I think that's gonna come into its well, own. Speaking of heavily laden, you also got the um, brake booster, the terrain yes. tamer brake booster. And then we're gonna be experimenting with pairing that up with the power brake, big brake kit as well. Yes. Because that was, a, that was a, a, a point of worry on the cruiser in the Bavians Cliff was the brakes. So, so I when I got back, compensated when I got back, I scratched the first two things on the upgrade list and I put number one, the big brake kit, number two, the big, the double diaphragm brake booster. Yeah. That to me was the worst point of the standard cruiser. Yeah. So I went overkill on that. There's no other way. Yeah. I did notice something where we were loading the cruiser today with all the parts to bring them here to Land Cruiser Heaven that even with just the parts in the back and a spare wheel carrier on the back of the truck, it was already starting to yeah. sag. So the, the Land Cruiser 79 suspension is really quite soft. Um, so when it comes to the leaf packs at the back, rufi has got the 500 to 700 kg parabolics. And I think that is gonna be, that's what I'm running on my truck and I'm also running the Pro Shocks, and it's been really, really nice. So we're gonna be definitely experimenting with it. Terrain Tamer also have a one ton um, parabolic leaf spring, which if the build gets a bit too heavy and it's, you know, we'll, you know if we'll and be it, going yeah, to that, yeah. We can, we can try that out as well. But the goal is to work with something that is pretty standard across the board. A lot of the trucks are going to the 500 to 700s and getting great results. I mean, we, my, my Hilux was seriously loaded on a Namibia trip. We had extra water, I had three people in the vehicle, mm -hmm. diesel, spare wheels, everything. 
and the rear of my vehicle didn't even sag at all. So we're hoping to see the same. The Land Cruiser's weight distribution is slightly different, so we'll see how that goes. This is gonna be a short build series. We've basically got everything lined up. I mean, you can see this amazing collection of kits here. Um, Rulfi has been waiting for me. He's got a garage full of all of these parts and we're gonna get this baby built in the next two weeks. We've got a lot of stuff to do. We've got canopies to sort out and rooftop tents to put on and everything, but this is gonna be absolutely sick. So I hope you guys are gonna join us. So now because we're working on stuff like brakes and we're working on you know suspension, all sorts of stuff like that, Nikki's gonna go and take the vehicle just around the block here, just to kind of have a feel for the brakes before we replace the booster, before we do the brake lines. So we have like an incremental um, perspective of the changes on the vehicle as it goes. So we can also give a bit of feedback on that and just kind of, you know, give more anecdotal evidence as to the changes that kind of happen uh, as we kind of progress on with the build. But good to see the little cruiser going and we've now cleaned up the workshop and we are ready to start installing all of the terrain tamer components for this vehicle. The handbrake can affect the brakes. Okay. Four, five, six, six it starts, no? seven, it stops on seven. Pay a million rand for a car and the handbrake sort of works. <laughs> <laughs> so just doing a few little tests, you know, just to see how's the suspension riding, how's the brakes performing, all of that stuff on the standard cruiser. And it's, it's really not bad, it's really not bad. I mean, you'd expect it to be decent for a car that costs so much, but it's fine. The problem is... Aah! The second you start loading up a cruiser, that's... and you start modding it, you put on bigger tires, you put on a bumper, you put on a canopy, that's when things start to kind of fall apart for the ride dynamics, for the braking, the handling, all of that stuff. So, it's, uh, it is unfortunately a thing if you're gonna, you know, build up a cruiser to the degree that Rolfi is going to do on his vehicle, you're going to need to actually be on it with all of your upgrades as well. And that is going to be everything from the clutch to the brakes to the suspension to literally every little thing you can think of gets upgraded on a Land Cruiser. It started. It started. The build has begun. Yep. Now you're going to do your preliminary run just to see how everything is standard and then as we go, you're going to feel all the difference and all the changes. Exciting. Lekker. Cheers, boys. See you now, now. First thing we're going to be doing on the cruiser is we're going to be doing a pressure test on the brake system to basically compare before and after the brake booster. Just to see what kind of percentage increase are you getting from installing a brake booster on the vehicle and see what type of difference that really is. Trap your roof. Yep. Close him. Trap up. So hard as you can. Good to be near to go. You know, it's safe. All right, so that was, what's that, nine and a half. Yeah, so, so it's a 60-40 right. split. So it's a 60-40 split. All right. Yeah. Um, so that's 15, five and a half, so three to one. Okay, so we've set a bit of a baseline now using the pressure gauges there, so now we can see just what kind of difference. It's going to be difficult to measure the difference because the Toyota gauges actually don't go far enough. So we'll see once we swap the booster out, you can see it is substantially bigger than the one inside there. Um, but once we get it going and we can actually get some, meet, meet some measuring, we'll see. Maybe it'll actually go past the gauge. Perfect. Yeah, that was spot, spot, spot on. Okay, now we take our uncle. Go fast. I can only manage to get trap. I can only sit you. Perfect. Yeah. For this 
five. So we're back to nine and four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I trap him. I trap him amber with his hero. <laughs> it makes you make it better. <laughs> huh? It's it's like it's 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 I mean, do you even need a big brake kit at this point? <laughs> Rufi, what are you busy with now? Pulling the lights out so that we can separate them and build a surprise. A surprise? Very nice. No, I'm very sensitive with the with the pedal feel, and that is that is impressive. I would I would say it's more than a 30% gain. That's just how it feels. So everyone is happy with the brake booster now. So now we can move on to the next stage. That is going to be putting in the braided brake lines. They are also extended because we're going to be lifting the vehicle. So it's just a really something you should definitely do if you are lifting your vehicle. There's not a lot of extension in those brake lines. <laughs> Yo, look at that length difference. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. It would actually be really nice if the shocks Yeah. So, last night we finished up the whole brake system, we got the new braided brake lines in. We've got the uh, dual diaphragm brake booster. Rufy's busy messing with the brakes with me right now. They, it's a marked improvement. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Rufy? It's, yeah, it's difficult to describe, but the brake booster was already a huge improvement. And just changing the three out of the five, um, brake lines, flexible brake lines, to braided hoses, sure. Nice. How's it's, the pedal feel? It's much better yeah. after we put the braided brake hoses yes, in. Yes, yeah. I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought it would be. So, because remember, if the, if the dual diaphragm booster is putting more pressure and those little hoses are only designed to take so much, Yeah. you know, you might be stretching it beyond what they actually yeah. want. But I think, you know, it actually feels, it feels really nice as a passenger as well. It feels smooth and stable, but it can really stop if it wants to. So it's actually a fantastic upgrade. I mean, if you're not going to change the weight of your vehicle much, um, and even if you are, this is a really great first point to kind of start with, with upgrading a brake system, where you can kind of keep your normal Toyota brakes. Yeah. Just changing that booster makes a huge difference. Yeah. But it's important that it's done right. Um, that is definitely something that you know needs to be done properly. I, I would go as far as saying is it must be the first thing you upgrade on your cruiser. Yeah, I think actually I do think the so. first thing. Forget everything else. If we had this setup on the on the cruiser in the Bavians Cliff, we wouldn't have even blinked. Wouldn't have even blinked. Yeah, we would have actually handled that all yeah. beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So well, look, that's the the brake booster stuff done. Now we're going to move on to the suspension. That's the next thing we can start playing around with. So, oh, thanks for the suspension test. So, I'm just going to check the standard one first, if it still, if it still works. Still works. So basically from now we're going to be putting in the pro shocks, we're going to be putting in the parabolic leaf springs in the rear. Um, we've got smart coils going up front which are progressive rated coils. That is ridiculous. That, I literally, that is like a full emergency stop yeah. on the standard brakes. All I did was, I just gave it a bit of pedal pressure yeah. and it was just there for you. Yeah. And it's and these we're not on the best tires here. We're not hearing the tires chirping or squealing or anything like that. So it's not like it's locking up the tires. So it's not overcompensating. It's just giving you the braking that you need. Um, so once we put on Rolfi's tires as well, those are got much better braking specs and handling specs than the KO2s that are on here now. So It'll also be very interesting to kind of add into the whole mix. But yeah, we've got a really fun day ahead of us. Let's keep going. 760 millimeters. 765, so it is hanging in the back. 
Yes, you can see it. 747. 750. Hmm. Very nice. So that's your caster correction. Okay? Yes. These are the pro bushes. Mm. So that little cross hashing on the inside there helps hold the grease. And they are self you can feel they're self lubricating. Mm. These are the for your shackles. Yeah. Oh. Yes. These are nice. Very nice. <laughs> what? What? Travel, but. Smart coil is going in. Um, basically, what you can see here is you can see that this actually fits the factory dimensions very well in terms of the width of the coil. So your clearances, everything there is going to be really nice. They haven't had to go very thick, even though they're getting a much higher rating out of this. Because Terrain Tamer use a very high quality steel on the smart coils. These are actually fantastic products. So we also have a bit of a progressive rating on it, so it starts a bit thinner at the top and it gets a bit thicker towards the bottom and that is going to allow for if you do have any variance in your weight it will accommodate that but it also helps when you're cornering and the vehicle undergoes any sort of additional stresses you've got a bit more kind of uh, rating to be able to dig into with the suspension so these can go in now obviously they are also quite a bit longer so that is where you are going to get your extra ride height from out of these versus the standard so step one you can't even and that's on what? Seven. Eight. Eight. You need to be a Land Cruiser, but you got, you're a Sasati at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> also quite hard. Oh. <laughs> that one's not slow, is it? <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just testing like to see pushes. where we're going to want to put the reservoir, just to make sure that it's positioned nicely, and then we've got good adjustment. So that is the thing that makes the Pro Shock so unique. It is a serviceable shock absorber, it's monotube and it's adjustable. But it's not just adjustable, it's easily adjustable. That's the thing that you know separates a lot of the shock absorbers. You know, some of them you've got to get out tools and adjust, you know, your shock absorbers with a set of tools. Some of them, you know, they just put the adjuster in such a difficult to reach place that it's hard to actually get there. Some shocks they might be adjustable but they're only adjustable by taking the whole thing apart and re-shimming them and revalving them inside. So basically, what's really nice with the Terrain Timber Pro Shocks is you can adjust your compression. You've got eight different settings of compression that you can kind of run through, and that will basically help you with the different type of weight that you're carrying. So maybe your front, you might have an on-road and off-road setting, but your back, you're going to change quite a lot depending on how much you've got loaded in the back or not. So it's really, really nice to have. Once we've got this all sorted down up front here, then we can move to the back. We can pull out the rear leaf springs. We can put in the parabolics. We've got the stabilizer bar that we can put in in the back there. So we've got a lot still to do today. We better get going. With the clock ticking away, it was time to get all hands on deck. The whole workshop pulled together to help get the last bit of the suspension in. The parabolic leaf springs, the bushes, shackles and the rear shock absorbers all going in. The thing that makes parabolic leaf springs special is the fact that they have no interblade friction, so they give a softer, more consistent ride quality. They're much more willing to move and flex, and because there is so much less metal involved, they are much lighter than the equivalent weight spec traditional leaf pack. And I find these are best paired with high quality shock absorbers for the best ride quality and performance. The next step was the rear sway bar. A simple bolt on kit using all the standard factory fastening points. This is going to really help keep the vehicle stable on those long days on and off road. The next stage of the suspension was getting the caster correction done. This will ensure that the wheels and the axles sit in the right position after lifting the truck.
and with everything talked up and ready to go, we could lower the vehicle and tackle a bunch of extra smaller tasks. It's time to try and give this truck a face. The headlights Rolf had been working on throughout the day were looking awesome, but they're a very time consuming job. So in the meantime, they got to work on stripping the factory snorkel and installing the new Safari RMAX snorkel. This thing is massive and will help the engine breathe a bit better once it's got all its performance upgrades. This is also the first time Rolf is drilling a hole into his brand new truck. There's no going back now. The airbox needs some major modifications to accommodate the RMAX snorkel, but we also figured now is a good time to put on the air filter insert kit from Terrain Tamer. It's going to need some time to cure overnight, and tomorrow morning we can put it all back together. But for now, we've done a huge amount in just one day, so we can call it quits for now and get back early tomorrow and finish up this badass truck. So we are back again for day three. We managed to do a hell of a lot yesterday. Rolfie's just doing a couple things on the front of the vehicle. They got the snorkel completely on last night. The headlights are back in. They're looking really awesome. Basically resprayed all of those and have put in some steady lights up in front as well. So that's looking really, really nice. Today we're hoping to get the bumper on. Finish up the last little bits on the suspension and um, then we are pretty much done and dusted. I think actually wait, we got the diesel filter to do and anything else Rufi? Diff breathers. Diff breathers. And then we hundreds. So that is super, super awesome. The truck is looking absolutely sick. So we put on the parabolic leaf springs now. We've got the pro shocks at the back. The stabilizer bar is in there now as well. Everything is looking very, very good. Everything's fit really nicely. We didn't have any hassles with anything. Perfect fits on everything. So we're hoping to maybe be able to get a bit of a drive in the truck today. Look, obviously we can't really test the suspension properly because it's set up for an overlanding rig. So we don't even have a canopy on here yet. So we don't really have the, the weight that this vehicle is actually gonna be carrying. But it might be an interesting test to see just with the Pro Shocks and the Parabolics. What can you actually kind of get out of it in a stock setup? But we know it's probably gonna be quite a, quite a hard ride. If we can at least get the bumper on that, it would be nice. The air box is now been curing overnight with the gasket in it. This creates a like a stiffening effect on the air box. Often what'll happen is when you're driving, especially on bumpy roads, the air box twists and then creates little gaps in the seal and that's how dust actually gets past the air filter. So basically what that gasket does is it stiffens the air box and it creates a bit of a tighter seal on your air filter so that's going to be something really nice to have it's essential on the cruisers especially the v8 cruisers a lot of people actually end up replacing the air box completely because the standard toyota ones happen to leak quite a lot of dust past them but otherwise yeah everything else is going really nicely here Hopefully we can wrap up soon and we can show you guys how beautiful this truck is going to look, especially with its new bumper. The final measurements are in and the truck has lifted around 4 inches. The goal is to be able to have a 50mm lift and be loaded for a trip. So unladen, it's definitely going to sit a bit higher. Next on our agenda was the diesel filter. This is important because we travel to a variety of different places, some very rural and you can never guarantee the quality of diesel is going to be free of water or contaminants. So the spare diesel filter also acts as a water separator. But speaking of water, the next thing on our list was the diff breathers. This helps keep water out of your diff oil. This is especially important for our next adventure because there might be some water crossings to have to deal with. All of our tweaks and changes are also going to help with the longevity of the vehicle to keep the vehicle in great condition despite its adventurous lifestyle that it's destined to have.
the final piece of the puzzle to get right now is the bumper, completing the look of the front of the truck and giving it some much needed protection. Now, it's time to get some weight on the vehicle and start getting it ready for some serious overlanding. Catch us on the next episode where we head to Bushtick Canopies and we turn this cruiser into an epic overlander.